get set up, I'll just, oh, somebody's recording, their funeral. Um, okay, what I'll do is I'll uh, just create a quick advert for a demo fleet. That I'll... Just bear with me one moment. Okay, so if you go to the um, Neocom, you'll see the button there. That, so if you pass over, it says Fleet. That's sort of like a little insignia, a little sort of uh, military insignia. Click on that to bring up your Fleet window. And then go to Fleet Finder. You are looking for you know, drop. You'll see a, a set of... Um, Buttons there, you'll see Find Fleets, a little tab there. In that tab, just look, drop the scope to My Alliance Fleets, and you'll see a fleet advertised with my name as boss, Romney Corba, and it's just called Fleet 102 Demo Fleet. So if you want to click on that and join, feel free, and we can take that from there. Oh, good, got a few in there already, excellent. Now, if you've not done this before and you don't have it there already, uh, just a note that um, free movers on and you can move yourselves to whatever position you like, but uh, for demonstration purposes, I'd like you to sort of not take a command position just yet. If you want to stay in DD, that's fine. For those that can't find it, a little trick that uh, can be used to advertise a fleet People can't find it in the Fleet Finder. Just drop the Fleet Advert in in the class uh, channel there. You can just click on it and join the Fleet if you're not in already. Now, first of all, uh, um, you can view the fleet as a flat list or a hierarchical list. Now, honestly, I don't know why CCP insists on keeping the flat lists because it's kind of useless. So if you don't see it as a hierarchical list, like you'll see me at, at the top of the, the list in the fleet command position, and you'll see like main, DD, tackle and so forth, if you don't see that as like a cascading list, what I'll need you to do is, where it says fleet on the top, you'll see like four little bars there. Yeah, Tamalu, just try again if, you look, if you're in Mumble. Just click on that. And you'll see a little so leaf fleet, edit advert, so on and so forth. You change to view, if you've got it as a flat list, just change that to view as hierarchy. Is anybody not clear on that, or if they haven't got it in hierarchical mode already? Feel free to speak up. Okay, can I assume that everybody's got um, everybody's got this as a hierarchical list? In case, in case, excellent. Now, next thing I'll touch on is the actual positions. Now, you will see, as you look at the cascading sort of uh, layout that you've got in the hierarchical mode, you will see, like at the top, is your fleet commander. That is basically the top of the tree in both uh, literal terms within the fleet mechanics and in terms of the fleet itself. Like, um, your fleet commander is directing the fleet, and basically his or her word is law. You follow it. Uh, even sometimes if it uh, seems suicidal, follow it anyway. You've got plausible deniability. Now, for uh, just under that, and you'll have, you may have several of these, uh, the next will be the wing. 
for instance. I'll just move myself to wing command. Go for fleet. And depending on the size of the fleet, you may see one wing or you'll see multiple wings. Under that, I'll just move myself again. Here's your squad commands. Now, as far as the university is concerned, the way we do things, uh, we do this to pass boosts, which we'll touch on boosts and bonuses, which I'll touch on a bit later. But in fleets outside of the uni, uh, that usually delineates uh, positions of relative importance. Uh, as I've mentioned, the fleet commander will take the entire fleet, look after that. Um, they will delegate uh, some responsibilities to the wing commanders, basically to look after um, items under that particular fleet and uh, take on certain roles and responsibilities. Uh, think of it as like sort of a vice president to the um, fleet's president. And under that is your squad commanders, which will take you know, specific responsibilities not covered by the fleet commander. Uh, for instance, um, your logistics squad commander will um, basically decide who's going to anchor, you know, who's basically going to be the, the central point there, um, organise um, and relay information on who needs you know, repairs and what have you. A new war commander, which you know, I've done before myself, will um, again decide whether we need an anchor or not so, and call out sort of uh, priority targets, small responsibilities like that. Any questions, feel free to pipe up. What, what's an anchor? Uh, an anchor, basically, depending on the type, type of the fleet, it will be one particular person uh, designated as literally an anchor point, and you will basically orbit on that person. And rather than manual pilot yourself, you will either hit orbit or approach on that particular person, and they will basically move you pretty much as a group. Um, uh, usually done in what's called kiting fleets, where you've got a bit of distance between yourselves and um, you know, the opposing fleet. Uh, more commonly used in logistics squads or e-war squads, where you're going to be a distance um, from the main, sort of the main blob of um, damage dealers, basically for protection. And it just makes it easier for that squad and that squad commands to know pretty much where everybody is. Cool, okay. Now, we'll just start to touch on boosts. Now, you'll see a number of like small chevrons there. It's like if you look at my name there in the main, in the main wing, you'll see a star there that delineates me as the fleet boss. That fleet boss means that I can manage all aspects of the fleet. Uh, I can invite people um, to join the fleet, move people around, promote, demote people, basically act as sort of the, the general secretary of the fleet. Next to that, you'll see a, another small symbol. If you pass over, it'll say wing boost. It basically means that I'm passing a set of uh, additional boosts, so uh, you'll get uh, extra attributes uh, for as many members of that wing as my skills allow for. And that cascades down through um, the uh, squads through to the members of those squads where applicable. And ne next to that is basically my position. Uh, those runs delineate me as the wing commander. If I move myself back up to, say, Fleet Commander, you'll see the same things. I've still got Boss. I'm now the Fleet Booster, although the, the symbol doesn't change much. But I've now got three Chevrons, which basically am a guest Fleet Commander. Now, note at the top, where it, just under where it says My Fleet, you'll see a row of icons. You'll see a little X or a little tick. You'll see the set of chevrons. You may or may not see the um, the boss symbol there, the star, and you'll get a booster next to it. 
and that will tell you basically, am I getting any boosts, who's actually providing them, and where are they providing them from. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Now, I've gonna actually been talking a little bit about boosts. Now, I'm actually gonna try and demonstrate what those boosts are. Now, I'm gonna move myself somewhere else. Now, how many people have we actually got in Aldrat? Next up, if you're in Aldrat. Excellent, just in fleet, or well, class is fine, I've got both. Okie dokie, okay, now this is going to be interesting. Now what I want you to do is those folks in Aldrat, just undock, undock, undock. Once you undock, you'll probably see me, Rodney Corber. I'll be flying an Enyo. Now, if you could make your way, if you could right-click in space and bring up your uh, bookmarks. Under Corporate Locations, you'll see an EUni folder. What I want you to do is I want you to go to the EUni pods. So under the EUni uh, Corporation Locations folder, you'll see an EUni pods Harmonia. Uh, bookmark. Just want you to walk to that. Try and broadcast that for you. Not that specific. Thank you, CCP. If you're a bit lost, just see if you can find Ronya Korba in the fleet and just walk to myself. Now the reason I've pulled everybody out here to the pause is to demonstrate how boosts work. At the base level, you'll get no, boot, no, no extras whatsoever. However, if you have members of your squad, preferably your squad commanders, fleet wing commanders or fleet commanders, that have certain skills, um, skills trained, you'll get uh, additional attributes like more shield, more armor, uh, you will be able to maybe uh, move a little further. Um, basically, your align times might be reduced. You'll actually get more maneuverability, and your target lock speed will increase. Now, at the moment, uh, you won't be getting anything. If you look under the My Fleet tab at the top of your fleet window, you'll see a red X there, which means that nobody's actually getting any boosts. So no extra attributes. Now, I happen to have a little bit of training in leadership because it's very handy for various other campuses. Now, if I move myself up to the wing command, you see the change in the, in the, uh, change in the symbols in the fleet? Feel free to speak up. I feel like I'm talking to myself here sometimes. What? Do, yeah. Do that again. You mean the chevrons? Yep. Next to the chevrons, you see how that's changed to a tick. Right. The little. You mean the plus mark or? Oh, I see squad booster. Okay. Yep. So you'll see a tick, and then you'll see two chevrons. That basically, if you pass over them, will give you a little bit more information, and it will tell you that yes, you are now getting bonuses from your wing commander. Now, if you, no, 
I'm not receiving any, but I assume that's... Yeah, neither am I. Right, right, never mind. I'm not an Aldrat. Yep. Okay, now, boosts... Now, these bonuses only take effect if you're in the same solar system as the person providing the boosts. I, you know, in my case, the Wing Commander. If you're an Aldrat with me, you'll see that tick. And you might see some um, your attributes changed depending on how you've got your um, uh, how you've got the uh, sort of layout at the bottom set up. If you've got display by percentage, it won't see much. I don't think we've got a wing commander at the moment. Hey Rush, can you move into? DD uh, squad limit. Does that change anything for anybody? Guess not. Are you an old rat? No. No. As as I said before, it only applies if you're in the same system as the boost provider. Got it. Now, for those not displaying as a percentage, you might see that uh, your shield armor and hold, uh, shield and armor chain. Sorry, Takar, you're about to say something. Uh, Takar, you're keying up. Oh, sorry. sorry, am I keying up? Yes, yes. That's straight. I'm a push yep. and I didn't think I was playing. Okay, sorry, tell me if my if I key up again. Okay. Yeah, will do. Okay. Uh, Rashad's brought up something that I was about to touch on. Now, in order to pass boosts from a fleet booster, be it uh, somebody in a uh, wing command position or a squad command position, you need to train the leadership um, skill, which is a fairly short train as it's uh, a level one skill, training time multiplier you know, one. For every level of um, leadership that you have, uh, you can pass boosts to two members of a squad, and those people will get, at worst, the scan resolution bonus uh, that you've, uh, tra you, know, you get when you train the leadership uh, skill. It's a fairly short train, and I would uh, encourage all unisters to train it to at least four, preferably five. In fact. Uh, uh, it takes about a week, so if you've got nothing else to train, absolutely train leadership. That way, you're next up for a fleet leadership role, put yourself into a squad command position, and pass the boost to the maximum 10 people in the, you know, in the squad. And I've just realised that, yeah, uh, Rashad's not in... So they can't come through. May I say something wrong? Yeah, go for it, man. No, I'm just going to include that, keep in mind that being in a squad commander position or a wing commander position even uh, doesn't necessarily mean that you will have any kind of leadership role in terms of actually leading the fleet. Yes, that is true. As particularly in uni, in uni fleets, uh, you're primarily there to pass boosts. I uh, mentioned earlier, I think before you got on, Rash, that a lot of fleets uh, outside of the uni, there's an, an explicit, there's a, an implicit expectation that you'll handle some of the roles um, taken, you know, either specific to your squad and squad type, or um, delegated to you by the fleet commander. Particularly in large fleets where an FC can't you know, micromanage every aspect of, like, a 255-person fleet. 
Oh yeah, for like Apple. Uh, yeah, like reporting so that everyone in your squad is at the location that you're in or supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. I think this is true for all the uni uni fleets, apart from being in the Logi squad commander position, where you actually are so, yeah. supposed to have some commands stuff going. Yeah, that is very true. I and mean, uh, there's a lot of information processing flying Logi. I don't fly enough of it. But, uh, yeah, uh, an experienced squad commander is pretty much mandatory if uh, you're going to have a successful time as a Logi pilot. You want me to go over it? If you like, mate. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, uh, so basically what's requested of you as a Logi Squad Commander is that you set up a Logi, um, a Logi Squad chat. That is, you just create a new chat with your chat, um, uh, the chat window, uh, called something like Logi Bros or whatever. Um, in that chat, it's uh, essential for, for when you're um, dealing with uh, cap chaining Logi, so um, the Guardian, the uh, Ogre, the Osprey, or the... Um, what's it called? Ah, the T2 Kaldari Logi, anyway. Um, and what Basilisk. we us- Yeah, Basilisk. Uh, and what we usually do is uh, we you usually fit a um, uh, X amount of reppers to... Uh, two ET chains. So, um, say that you have a three slash two setup. That means you have three reppers and two um, two uh, uh, ET transfer things. Can't remember the name. Anyway, uh, and then you just pass one ET to the uh, name above you and the uh, name below you. So in my case, it will be to uh, Cannoneer, Nairo, and Release Narlon. Um, and then you just, uh, sit and hang around in the Logi, um, mumble channel as well, which is a command channel, so you set up a whisper key and whatnot. And, and then, uh, that's everything that you need to do. Maybe go over how Logi and ET works with, with your, uh, uh, squad mates. Oh, got a bit of extra out of that. Uh, my main fleet role has been Big War, which is similar. Uh, we generally don't have a mumble channel, but we usually keep a, a squad channel open. And that's a fairly similar sort of um, concept to what Rashara has outlined, but except we don't necessarily, you know, we don't have to worry about cap chains or what have you. Um, as an E-War pilot, depending on, you know, who's what sort of E-War you're packing, uh, we'll tell... Um, like somebody run, running sensor dampeners uh, outline that uh, their targets are going to be either opposing E-War, um, opposing logistics, you want them damped down so they can't rep or jam anybody. Um, if you've got people with um, ECM themselves, um, they can uh, pass the, you know, again, jam out logistics and uh, opposing E-War. Report that back to the squad commander so the dance guys can put scan resolution on and you know, the uh, people like painters and uh, track and disrupt the people, they can just follow the primary. But yeah, as Rosara said, the squad commander, you can also, you know, you're there also to pass information back and forth between the wing commander and the, re- you know, the rest of the squad. Yeah. As you can see, uh, I've moved down to DD Squad Commander, so the folks in that squad have now got the boosts. However, those in the Tackle and E-War squads uh, may have lost theirs. Unfortunately, the um, mechanic doesn't allow sort of a a full flow of um, boosts uh, if there is an empty, you know, if there is an empty position somewhere along the chain. For instance, now, you Cannoneer, you've probably just lost that boost.
So, yeah, always important, particularly uh, if you do fleet command, always important to ensure that those, um, those positions are filled by people that ideally have at least uh, leadership five. So basically the sort of waterfall from the top of the tree that's uh, ideally got the best boosts gets down to the, you know, as many squad members and wing members as possible. Any questions so far? Green Piper? Uh, just a side question on leadership. Uh, uh, to actually, like, uh, I've taken a look at leadership books and in general other other uh, other bonuses. Like, there's an armor bonus as well. Do they stack together? So, let's say, for example, you are a uh, squad leader and you have leadership five, and let's say uh, there's a skill for armor increase or something like that. I, I don't remember exactly what what it is, but does it accumulate as well? So if you were, let's say, for example, a squad leader, do you also give the bonus for leadership and the armor, or do you have to select? What you will pass on is um, basically higher skill. Uh, so the higher skill in the chain passes on the boost they've got. Uh, it's generally um, for each level of skill of the, you know, the basic armor, skirmish, um, Geez, it's been a little while, so I've just got to look it up. You want me to link this, guys? Yeah, if you could. All right. I've got too much info on my uh, screen. It's basically for its uh, highest, you know, highest boosts get passed. Uh, there's no, you don't need to worry about stacking penalties or anything like that because they don't really apply. Uh, it's generally 2% per level. Um, Only so linked in the got a, uh, that's fine. Uh, pretty much everybody should, you know, would have hopped in fleet anyway. So if you click on those, they'll tell you, uh, what, uh, attributes are affected. If you want to see that in practice, so go to your, sort of like, just under your capacitor wheel uh, on the main screen, you'll see, like, you know, four little lines there for your options. So if you click on that and uncheck display readout as percentage, you'll get the raw numbers for your shield, your armour and your hull. So I'll... So, Canon in Aero, uh, what have you got for the numbers for your shield, um, armour, and um, structure at the moment? It'll be just above the like the cargo uh, cargo link. It's it's grayed out to me. I click on it, and it's grayed out. Uh, click on options under under the under the wheel. Right click. Okay. Uh, left click. Sorry. All right. Oh, oh I that see. Needs to be checked. Cool. Thank you, Zach. Um, let's see. Shield is 648, armor is 863, and hull is uh, 750. Okay. Now, I've just moved myself to squad command. What are they now? Um, shield is 700, armor is 932, and then hull is 750. Okay, so you can see sort of the practical side of the, you know, of the uh, leadership skills there. Like, for instance, I've got uh, Wing Commander 3, and in each of those skills, Armoured Warfare, Information Warfare, Siege Warfare, and Skirmish Warfare, I have those at level 4. So I will pass an 8% boost to, uh, to shields from Siege Warfare, uh, Armour from Armoured Warfare, Information Warfare, uh, will give an 8% targeting uh, targeting range bonus. So if you look at the, uh, if you go to like a fitting window on your ship, under targeting, um, you'll see, uh, you know, on the 
right hand side there how far you can target. For instance, I've got like 57.3 kilometers. Right. That goes up as well, so you can target farther. Skirmish warfare will give you, an eight, you know, you'll be 8% more agile, which is very handy if you're in small ship. So if you, you can see what I'm getting at here, it's a very useful skill to train, and particularly in campuses where you're going to be running in a fleet pretty much 24-7. Um, if you can, part, if you have those skills and you can pass those boosts, you will be absolutely loved and adored. Um, you'll see posts all over the forum recommending, please train these skills because they are useful. And, you know, they even save ships. I've walked out in, like, 2% structure, and it was literally the difference between, you know, somebody in that, you know, in my fleet training that skill allowed me to get out where otherwise, you know, I would have popped and had to get my pot out. So, wow, yeah. yeah. That is know, powerful. Yeah, it's not exactly a sexy skill. It won't make you risk. It won't, you know, it won't blow up ships for you. But as a support, it, you know, um, I can't describe how useful it is. So, yeah, if you're stuck for anything to train, pop a leadership skill in your queue. You won't regret it. Trust me. So, so it seems like there are boosts to everything in leadership, you know, to some extent. Yep, basically anything useful. Um, I mean, this is just the, the basic levels. There are, you know, you're starting to look like warfare links, but that's a little bit more advanced and slightly outside of the scope of uh, you know, this little class. But, yeah, um, at the base level, very useful, and they pass on pretty much anything that's kind of useful. But the only thing they don't do is stuff like E-War Strength or uh, Repping or what have you. But uh, the important stuff is definitely covered. You'll Target a little quicker, and Rashar is just linked the specialists. A little bit more advanced, a little bit longer train. And, you know, I'll be around after class if people want to poke me about those. I'm not an expert, but I can answer a few questions. But, yeah, for someone like myself, uh, with my links, with well, my boosts at the moment, You'll get the extra target, your extra scan resolution just from um, leadership itself, and the extra shield, hull, targeting range, and uh, so forth. You get from the warfare uh, warfare skill. Yeah, very nice indeed, and in a, in a fleet, almost invaluable. I'm going to digress from that a little now that we've got a, an understanding of um, sort of the boosts. We'll touch on watch lists. So uh, question. Can say something? Yeah, question. Can you be a uh, regular squad member, not in a leadership position, and still pass boosts to if to 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 a fleet? You can designate a fleet booster, although I'm not exactly sure. Let's try it. Are you in all uh Russia? Uh, in two jumps. All right. We'll try this as an experiment. I've not actually done this as a practical experiment. You can designate uh, the fleet boss, the fleet commander can designate what's called a fleet booster, and that's someone not necessarily in a command position but anywhere in the fleet, and that person will be designated the person that passes on their specific boosts, ideally to the rest of the fleet. More often than not, that person may be running uh, those warfare links related to the uh, skills that Rashar pointed out, the Arfair, Armored Warfare Specialist, the Information Warfare Specialist, and so forth. But uh, we're going to try and see if a regular set of boosts can be passed from a fleet boost to the rest of the fleet. I might do this. I'll move myself up to wing command. Okay, in order.
Uh, Hillbilly Hinkin, are you online at the moment? Now, I am, but I'm too skin. far away to do you any good. Yeah, I was going to say, now, uh, just just going to use you as an exercise just momentarily. Now, Hillbilly is not getting any boosts, simply because anybody? Not only is he not in system, even if he was in system, he wouldn't be getting any boosts. Somebody, part, you know, somebody explain why that is? I mean, it, I don't know. Is it just just because they're not in the they're not in the system and they're not in just because they're in the fleet doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get those boosts, right? Yeah. Well, Rash has got it pretty. You know, Rash has got it dead. Rashad's got it dead right. Sorry. Uh, because he's not in he's not in the chain. He's not actually part of the chain. He's actually in a separate wing, so he won't actually get any boosts. In order for him, well, in order for him to get boosts in our current situation, I would need to hop up to Fleet Command, and someone with leadership, uh, well, at least leadership two, or even leadership one for that matter, because there's only one of him, needs to hop in. Actually, no, they need. Uh, that'd be right. They'd need to hop in the uh, forward command position in order to pass those boosts. Ah, uh, good. Rashar is on grid. I'm going to try an experiment here. I'm going to try and make uh, set me Bashar. as uh, squad commander, or I can do it myself, and set yourself as a uh, booster and move down to the squad because you have higher be- or better boosts than me. All right. So whoever it was who had those numbers, do you remember what it was when? What what it originally was, or what it is with the boost? Uh, both. Uh. Ish. I mean, I, I'm getting the boosts now, and it's at 700 and 932 and 750. Hmm. Have you got fours, Rashad? Have you got threes? I've got threes. So if you set me as squad commander and yourself has uh, moved yourself down to a regular squad member, proceed. Yeah, six forty eight, eight sixty three, and 750. And okay. now. You should have slightly higher. Yeah, 687, 914, and 750. Hmm. Oh, um, set yourself a squad booster, Roner. Just right-click your name and fleet. Oh, no, no, uh, don't move up to the leadership position. Yes, right. stay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, not enough coffee. <laughs> so, just set this. Oh, that's because you're in. Ah. Try and set myself fleet booster. Try it now. Or, no, uh, just uh, squad. I think. Otherwise, we would need fleet commander. Here we go. And okay. now you should have uh, the higher number. You'll see, you know, next to the star, next to my name, which denotes Fleet Boss, you'll see another symbol there, and that outlines that, yes, I am, in fact, Squad Booster, even though I'm not actually in a Squad Command position. Yeah, I just thought I'd mention this, because it can come in handy if you're running um, missions with someone, and you yourself don't have enough standing to accept the um, level of missions that you run. And uh, in order to warp uh, simultaneously the Squad Commander um uh, squad warp you to the position of the uh, mission and you still pass boosts if you have higher boosting skills than him. Cool, okay. So has anybody got any more questions about you know, boosts and bonuses? No, that really covers it. All right, then. I might move on to probably the the last really interesting bit of the class, and that's watch lists. The purpose of the watch list is... uh, Let's 
treated something like a, you know, uh, more like a like a speed dial, for instance, you will add members to your you know members to your watch list, usually fairly important people, uh, and it basically allows you to see their status, provided they're on grid. You'll get their um, shield um, and hull status as a as a bar or set of three bars. And depending on its setup, you'll be able to perform a number of actions like warp to member um, and so forth. You know, warp to member, orbit member, approach, all the sort of the usual things you would do normally um, through the overview. So what we're going to do is I want everybody to right-click on my name, Ronnie Corbett, in, um, in the fleet window. And I want you to right-click and add to watch list. Okay, those on grid, you should be, see me with three bars there. They should all be full, because thankfully no one's shot at me. That's not an invitation. Excellent. Now, on standard fleets, you'll be asked by the FC to add certain people to that watch list for purposes of you know, getting to them quickly, if, if they're like scouts or skirmishers. Uh, the fleet commander, because he's important, and you want to know if he goes down or where he is. And quite often, uh, your second in commands or third in commands. You know, often the third in commands just there to call a scout up, but hey, they're still important. So what I want you to do, I'm going to press gang. Uh, I want you to find Rashar Arji in the uh, fleet window, right click and add him to your watch list. So you should have myself and Rashar. Once you've done that, you can go to the top of your squad, right click and you can add the rest of the squad to your watch list. So you can go add squad members to watch list. And it basically fills out the, um, the watch list with the rest of the members of your squad. Now you can have 15 members in a watch list at any given time. So generally, yeah, uh, depending on the FC and depending on their requirements, you'll have members of your squad, if, particularly if you're a squad commander, because you want to make sure that everybody's sort of with you and not lagging behind or off-grid. You'll want your fleet commander and probably your scouts at the absolute bare minimum. If you're an FC, that changes a bit because you can't have everybody on your watch list. You'll just generally have your squad, your wing commanders. Uh, your wing commander might just have uh, the uh, squad commanders below him, but everybody will have the scouts. And what, why specifically the scouts? I shall demonstrate that in a moment. Um, has anybody got a? Actually, I'll, I'll make myself I'll treat myself as a scout. Now, before I do this, I want to just X up if you you can see you know, you've got me in the watch list. Excellent. Now, as Rashara has noted, you no longer see, you'll still see him in your watch list, but as he's not on grid with you, you won't have an idea about his status, so you won't see the three bars. Uh, Ridin, are you in Mumble? Just, um, just, I'll just drop the advert in again. It is advertised.
Let's drop them in class again. Uh, ridden, can you ex, uh, get ridden if you want, if you actually want to join the fleet, can you back up in uh, class.euni please? I'll give you an invite if you can't see the advertisement. I'll wait for the flash and I'll press on. So, but yeah, why, you know, the question was asked, why add the scouts to the watch list? Ideally, so say you're in a PvP fleet, be it not, be it anything else, your scout has headed off to a plex or some sort of celestial, or some, a location, and has been, you know, yellow box aggressed by uh, someone that obviously, you know, wants him dead. I'm going to warp off grid, basically acting as a scout. Notice how you've lost boosts, so I've warped. You know, actually, no, you still should have them, but you won't actually see the bars. There we go, we've got chain ridden. Thank you. Okay. Break, break. Uh, this is Romney Corba. I've been aggressed by Snurge McBork in an incursus. Please walk to Romney Corba. So what you do there on your watch list you right click on my name in the watch list and you press warp to member and you should warp straight to where I am. Oh, uh, okay, okay, I see. So, now you've warped to me. And you can warp to me at distance as well. For instance, we've got a Griffin pilot on uh, on grid. Now, I fly a bit of Ewar, so I'll pass on this little bit of advice. If you're in an Ewar frigate or any, any Ewar ship and, and a scout calls you to warp to me or warp to name, you warp to them preferably at just outside your optimal range because... Uh, you're a little bit uh, squishy and you're probably going to die fairly quickly if you uh, walk right on top. But that's sort of more of a, an e strategy rather than a general fleet strategy. But yeah, but you it's, see sort of why it's... Used. Sorry, go ahead. It's true for Lodge as well, but you want to warp uh, within your optimal range so that you can actually rep people when you land. Yeah, e you can you've got a little bit of leeway because you're probably drifting to optimal anyway. But yeah... Um, in terms of logistics, what Rashar said, uh, get within 60 kilometres because, or whatever your distance, uh, optimal distance is, so you can start ripping immediately. A handy tip uh, passed on through experience: when you are adding, uh, when you are adding a scout or a skirmisher, particularly to your watch list, it always helps to drag. You can drag and you can just drag people around your watch list. So it's quite often advisable if you have a designated scout or skirmish person to drag that person to the top of the watch list. Just to save you those few, you know, fractions of seconds looking through the list thing, all right, who have I got to walk to? You can just go to the top person, right click, walk to member, and you're away. So as a general rule of thumb, put your scouts on top. Your fleet commander will generally go under them. Then maybe your squad commander. And if you've got the rest of the squad added, they'll go under them. Um, this changed a little bit for logistics. Uh, shall I cover it, right, right, Rashar, or uh, do you want to cover it? Because it's slightly different for their watch list. 
Uh, you, you can take it if you want to. All right, I'll do it. All right, it's so, over. Yeah, I could leave that for another time, actually, because it's more of a logistics 101 thing. So I might just leave that just open to general questions now. I think I've covered everything that I actually wanted to cover with this. Um, I I do have a odd question. I don't know if it's quite related. I just I see the little speakers above all of all this, and it reminds me. Um, why don't people more? Why don't people use the in-game chat more than more than we do? The voice. Um, I mean, I hear it sucks, actually... but I mean that that feels like a generic answer a lot. Yeah, I. I... I don't think it's a matter of, you know, the e-voice stuff being, you know, a bit rubbish. It's just that uh, uh, there are external tools like Mumble or um, or TeamSpeak that are just superior in a number of ways. So uh, e-voice is you know, used somewhat, uh, somewhat less than uh, these other tools. Although, if memory serves me correctly, I think RVB may still use e-voice. But uh, most corps will use either Mumble or TeamSpeak or some variant of it, you know, Ventrilo or what have you. But yeah, eVoice, it's there, and it's there. You know, if there's nothing better, you know, you've at least got an option. But I don't see it used that often. And and also just because I uh, it, I I play a lot of Dust, and that's how you communicate between the two. I just figured more people would use it. Yeah, I'm and that's... not sure. Do you have the overlay? Uh, if you use the, um, or do you get an overlay? Because that might be one of the reasons why you're not, why are, we are not using it. Although we have it as a fallback option in case Mumble fails. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I think I do remember seeing an overlay the last time I used um, Eve Voice. You might get a little sort of icon in the, you know, in the fleet or the. Uh, yeah, the watch list windows, but it's been so long that I've just forgotten, to be honest. And is is there any way to see where people are in your fleet? Like, I've, a lot of the times when I'll, I'll get in halfway through and then I won't know anywhere where anyone is, and then I try to ask, and a lot of the times they're too busy. Is there a way for me to find out other than, like, um... How it says where, where you're saying travel to Alderat at the bottom of the fleet. Yeah, window. it's yeah. There's no real simple way of doing it. Uh, if you've got a fleet or squad commander that's broad or anybody that's actually broadcasting, it's a boon because at least give you an idea. Um, it's something that we as the uni sort of don't do enough of, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, generally, uh, if you're behind the fleet and you're not 100% sure where there are, there are, you just need to wait for a, a break in comms and just politely ask. Right. Okay. Unless there's no real you're... sort of. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, unless you're in a um, leadership position, because then you can right-click the four horizontal lines for options and see where your squad mates are. If you're in a squad commander position, your wing mates, I think, for wing commander, and the whole fleet for fleet commander. I'm, I'm not sure how to come across them. Yeah, there's always a buried option there somewhere. It's also uh, one of the things that squad chats is uh, very useful for, for asking directions on where you are. So even if you're not a logi or um, e work. Uh, squad commander uh, pilot, then you should set up a uh, squad chat for your squad. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's become almost, uh, well, it's pretty much mandatory and news on patrol fleets just through the sheer size. Smaller gangs, we tend not to use them so much, sort of, if we've only got sort of like a handful of people, because you know, it's fairly easy to communicate otherwise. Uh, Teka has mentioned star map, my information, my fleet members. Um, yeah, you could, but it's a little bit unwieldy, and you've really got to sort of hunt through the map to see sort of where a large blob of people is going to be. So, yeah, I wouldn't really recommend it, particularly if you're in dangerous space, because it just takes a little bit too long. Uh, does this mic work? Yes. Yes, it does. If you've got a question, fire away. Oh, no, I was just checking the mic. This is ridden. I came in late. 
Ah, uh, that's okay. But overall, it was really good info. It's, I mean, before I didn't really understand the point, but now, now I do. The point of fleet, I mean, like other than organization, there's there's more to a fleet than just to organize things. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I hope I've covered any. Yeah, you know, sorry, go, go ahead. Oh no, no, no! I was just saying. I was just. I was gonna head out, but uh, if unless you had something else to say. Uh, not really. Uh, as a finale, what I might do for those guys on the grid, I'll do what's called a uh, I'll wing walk you back to PTS. So, got a handful of people on there. Just take the wing warp. You'll see a little box there saying, My name, warping fleet to Aldrat PTS. Got a little bit of a head start on me, should catch it. Yeah, this is usually covered in Fleets 101, but uh, the point of a squad warp, wing warp, fleet warp is ideally to ensure that uh, you know we're desirable, that everybody lands on the grid at the same time, no matter what your warp speed is. That's a definite advantage uh, if you want to really jump somebody and ensure that you don't trickle in, because uh, sometimes if you're trickling in sort of a bit at a time, um, people tend to die, and die horribly, particularly if they're in small squishy ships, which tend to warp a bit quicker. Okay, I think pretty much uh, finishes it up. Uh, I'll be around for a little while if you've got any more questions or just want to ask me anything in particular. And uh, thanks for everybody's time. I hope you've all learned something. Uh, mind my uh, occasionally sort of uh, disorganised sounding uh, you know, sort of uh, teaching of the class. I just decided to do this an impromptu thing because I think it needs to be taught. Oh, yeah. That, that, that really does help. I, under, I understand it better now. So Cool. Well, th thank you very much, Romir. Yeah, thanks a lot. Sorry for staying. And thanks for coming, guys. That's kind of a random oh, you know question. Me. Shoot. Um, I've got a few. I'm I'm ridden. Um, I've got a few leadership skills. I uh, have no. Uh, I'm just coming back to the game a couple months, so I'm pretty much a noob. Uh, have no desire for a squad position or something like that. But uh, would it? Be a good idea to train up. Like right now, I have leadership to four, and a couple of the other ones to two and three. Would it be advisable to train them up, even though I don't really have the experience to lead a squad? Yes, honestly, um, yes, yes. Yeah, there's only one answer. It's yes. It's very short. Okay. Um. The, yeah. the thing. Um. So. F I don't know if you were in, but um, what I said was that when you're in a squad commander position, it doesn't necessarily mean that you will be acting as a um, in a leadership position in terms of commanding or directing a squad or a wing. Um, the only thing that you might do is set up a channel for your squad, but that is something that you can delegate to someone else. So you say... Um, uh, hey, Zach, set up a channel for this squad, please. And if Zach is a uh, happy and joyful GDC, he will happily oblige. Um, and on the occasional large fleets, you uh, might have to report to your uh, wing commander or fleet commander uh, if your entire squad is on grid with you. So okay. they will say uh, wing to squad two. Uh, you have all your members, and you will say yes or no, depending on. Okay. And then other than that, you might just work as a booster if uh, if you're needed or your skills are needed. Yes, unless you're in the logistics or DD squad. Or, sorry, logistics or e-war squad, because then you might have to call primaries and uh, whatnot. Okay. But that is also yeah. something. Sorry, sorry. I was just gonna say. 
sort of if you're wondering should I, you know, so in summary, you know, if you're thinking should I train a leadership skill, answer is absolutely yes. Um, again, like I said pretty much towards the start of the class, it's not the sexiest thing in the world. It may not make you risk. It may not blow ships up for you, but it's greatly appreciated in the fleet. And if you come down to like low set campus where Rashar and myself live, uh, any of the other campuses like uh, the Wormhole campus, um, null set campus, even the uh, even the mining campus, I think, because of course there are boosts for um, for you know, mining skills, particularly sort of the mining you know, mining foreman skills, mining foreman links. Always appreciate it. Yeah, and yeah, walkers get the most out of them. 